All right, in this video, we're going to look at quadric surfaces. This goes with section 2.6 of the OpenStax textbook for calculus volume three. I'm just going to try to identify some common quadric surfaces. You might want to be do a quick review of conic sections in two dimensions, because uh, this is sort of the three dimensional analog of that. Before we get to those common conic section, common quadric surfaces, uh, just a real quick uh, note about cylinders. So we often hear cylinder and we think of this shape here, um, which is a cylinder, but we like to generalize the idea here of cylinders. Um, and so this specifically would be a cylinder made from a circle or a right circular cylinder. Um, but really a cylinder uh, doesn't have to have a circle as a cross section. It just has to have parallel lines to a shape uh, and these lines are called the rulings. So instead of a circle uh, as a cross section, it could be some uh, curve, like this quad cubic function z equals x cubed. And you take that shape, which is clearly not a circle, and then you extend with these parallel lines, uh, which are the rulings, and then this would still be considered a cylinder or a cylindrical surface. So in advanced math, we generalize the idea of a cylinder to beyond that of a right circular cylinder. Uh, and if we start looking at surfaces in three dimensions, we might want to talk about their traces. Uh, and the trace is just a cross section um, that is made by taking a coordinate plane and intersecting it with the surface. So in this case, uh, we look at the coordinate plane where y equals zero, and we sort of slice it that way, uh, and then we end up getting a trace. So these were really popular and important before we had a lot of technology because people didn't have technology to do these three-dimensional graphs, but they could still hand-draw on two-dimensional graphs, and so they studied these surfaces by looking at their traces. Um, it's still helpful now uh, if you are trying to study these without technology and get a better feel for them. All right, on to quadric surfaces. So the quadric surfaces are all cases of the general quadric quadratic equation of three variables. Uh, and so three variables, x, y, and z, and we're allowing uh, linear and second degree terms, uh, x squared, y squared, z squared, x, y, z, but also x, y, x, z, y, z terms in there. So anything like this where a through k are just constants uh, is considered a quadric surface. Let's look at some specific types. An ellipsoid, uh, of which a spheroid or a sphere is a special case, um, just like an ellipse is a, a generalization of a circle. Um, and you can see that in the book, they give you the general equation here, uh, and you'll see x, y, z all squared, right? So it is the quadratic equation for those. Um, and then these constants here, um, kind of tell you the di distance you go from the center out to the edge in each direction. Uh, the traces in this case uh, with uh, each of the coordinate planes would just be an ellipse. Uh, next, we have a hyperboloid of one sheet. And uh, the difference here uh, in the equation is that we have one of the variables subtracted. Now here, this negative sign is in front of z but that negative sign could be in front of x or y. Um, whichever one it's in front of, that would indicate the axis of rotation. And uh, you'll get an ellipse if you do a sort of an x, y uh, axis, or sorry, x, y plane uh, trace, um, but you'll get a hyperbola if you do a trace on the other two coordinate planes. I notice it is one continuous sheet. Uh, which allows you to differentiate it from a hyperboloid of two sheets where they're two separate pieces. Uh, and you see the difference here in the equation is that we've got uh, two of these are negative. Uh, again, it doesn't have to be the z1 that's positive, but if the z1 is the different sign of the other two, then that's going to be your axis of rotation. Um, and uh, you have very similar traces here, except a trace in the middle right here uh, would be an empty set because it wouldn't intersect at all. 
Uh, now, a cone we normally think of as just half of this shape, but uh, in the realm of quadric surfaces, a cone is sort of a two-part cone. It's got a top and a bottom. And you'll see the big difference with this equation is that there's a zero on the other side instead of a one. All the previous quadric equations had a one there, and this has a zero. We also do have one of the variables here is negative, or the other opposite sign of the other two. Uh, otherwise, it does look like two cones kind of stacked on top of each other with their pointed ends. Uh, for traces, we get an ellipse. If you were to do xy plane here, uh, hyperbola in the other directions. Again, the one variable that's different sign from the other is the axis of rotation. And here we get an elliptic paraboloid, sort of combines a parabola and an ellipse. And this equation is definitely different because one of the variables is not squared. All the other ones had uh, all three variables squared. Here, z is not squared. And so that ends up being the axis of rotation here. Um, XY plane would give you an ellipse uh, for a trace, but in the other directions, you're just going to get a parabola. So ellipse and parabola, elliptic paraboloid. All right. Uh, and the hyperbolic paraboloid, also sometimes called a saddle, also has one of the variables not squared uh, and will give you traces of a hyperbola and parabola. So the hyperbola from the xy plane and then the parabola from the other. Uh, and notice the difference between this one and the previous one is that these are opposite signs. All right, so uh, take a minute to look at this equation and maybe look back at the previous slides and identify uh, the quadric surface for this equation. So you should have gotten that this is an ellipsoid shape here. And you would need to divide through uh, to make it look like the standard form. So if you divide everything by 144, uh, then you will get it looking like that standard form. So sometimes you have to simplify these equations or change them around a little bit. So correct answer there is A, ellipsoid. And how about this one? This one is D, elliptic paraboloid. And you had to do some completing the square here uh, where you would have to factor off any kind of leading coefficients and then complete the square inside. Uh, so if I had a negative two, uh, I'd do half of that squared, which would be plus one. And since I'm adding a plus one in there, that's really adding a nine because of the nine out here. Uh, and so on the other side of the equation, I would need a nine. And then I would do something similar with y. Uh, in this case, I'm adding four inside, but that's really 16. And then with z, uh, z is not squared, and so you would just that. And there's already a 25 here. So let's bring that over to the other side. And uh, that, of course, adds up to zero. So we could really bring the 36z over to the other side. Uh, and then this factors into x minus 1 squared, y plus 2 squared. Then you can divide everything by 36, and you get that general form of that. And so that's the elliptic paraboloid there, uh, where z is the axis of rotation. And then you've got a uh, center at x equals 1, y equals negative 2. And then A and B are four are A and B are two and three. So we had to kind of do the same thing you would do to get a circle from general form to standard form in some of these uh, to make them look the way they do in those initial formulas. But 
if you look at the elliptic paraboloid, that is the setup we just had, right? So, so these are all centered at the origin. Uh, and so you won't see any numbers subtracted, but, but you could always shift them to have some other center uh, by just subtracting numbers directly from X, Y, and Z. Uh, and so this one was shifted away from the origin uh, to, to somewhere off center. Right. Uh, well, that's it for this one and no methodology here, but uh, we will have some activity time. Uh, and again, this was a presentation by Matthew Watts it contained images and text from the OpenStax textbook Calculus Volume 3 by Jed Herman and G. Strange, CC by NCSA.